All right, everyone, it appears that you do have a perpetrator who's been caught in connection with the uh, Tree of Life synagogue shooting it happened earlier in Pittsburgh. Uh, I believe there were eight people killed uh, at last count, including several officers that had been shot. The uh, suspect is named Robert Bowers. Now, this is this is supposedly the case. It's not 100% confirmed. Uh, pretty much it has. It came over a police scanner, apparently. Assuming that this is the shooter, he appears to have gone ballistic, like literally right before the shooting, had posted on Gab, actually, uh, with regards to, apparently, his, his willingness to conduct this particular act. Now, there's a lot of misinfo currently being peddled, and that's because the lamestream media uh, decided not to bother to look into him. They're like, oh, well, you know, must be a far-right Nazi or something. Well, he's definitely a Nazi, uh, after a fashion, but he's not far-right. Uh, in fact, he's actually an ethno-leftist. He's in the vein of Spencer, uh, actually literally enjoining predominantly socialistic views. This is becoming more and more common among identitarian groups. They're not following the traditional trajectory of maybe American ethno-nationalism, which tends to be on the right. It tends to be hooked in with survivalism, um, you know, anti-gun control sentiment, so it tends to gravitate to the right. You're seeing more now that it's adopting actually literally national socialist beliefs. Now, he actually was apparently, assuming, again, it's alleged at this point, he hasn't been convicted of anything if he's the shooter, um, apparently antagonistic towards Trump and believes in sort of uh, various conspiracy theories like the kind you see shit posted on 4chan about, well, Trump is controlled by the Israelis and, you know, stuff like that. I've seen that posted myself. First and foremost, I'd like to say, I fucking told you so. Uh, to the lamestream media, to the corporate press, to Silicon Valley's big tech firms, I fucking told you over a year ago that this is exactly what was going to fucking happen if you kept deplatforming people for having what you would call offensive beliefs. The fact that you have done so has created echo chambers. It's not, Gab's not an echo chamber. I'm on there. I'm a libertarian. Uh, there are plenty of other people on there. There's a wide variety. Some are on the left. There's a heavy evangelical presence, which isn't necessarily right-wing all the time. There is an identitarian presence there because it's a free speech platform. That being said, the reason why they're there is because you've kicked them off all of the more mainstream sites. The problem that this has created is that they are part of an echo chamber now, subgroups on these sites. Um, they're not. It's not like Gab is a Nazi site, like Krasenstein says. It's actually the exact opposite. It's a libertarian front a free speech site. They simply happen to tolerate individuals that you have made into pariahs, into lepers. The problem is people like me who ordinarily would be able to have access to these people, debate them, speak with them, hopefully moderate their views in such a way that if, the, if someone's hateful, they're hateful. Who fucking cares? This individual now has allegedly killed eight people. There's a big difference between conducting that particular act, the crime, the action, and the simple belief. The simple belief Okay, they're bigoted. I don't fucking care. I'm willing to talk to them. And the hope is, if they have normal social interaction with people who aren't just reinforcing their own white supremacist or other supremacist or other potentially violent views, uh, I say potentially, I've known many identitarians that, yeah, I, I would never expect that they would suddenly snap and do such a thing. Hopefully, there's a moderation of the behavior, of the actual physical outcome, so that at the very least you don't have this sort of thing happen. Silicon Valley has been warned by creators such as myself now for over a year that this is exactly what would end up happening if you started pushing these people to the side, pretending you, you are reinforcing their already fringe views and turning them from individuals who have out their beliefs according to your standards, which are admittedly subjective, into fanatics. You're doing that by putting them under constant stress. You've, you've, you've created fear in them. And you expect that somehow this makes the situation better. It doesn't make it better. It makes it worse, a many times worse. Unfortunately, I would be very surprised if you don't see more attacks like this in the future. Race relations and things of that nature peaked in this nation around the time that people began communicating, and it was very, very much Wild West Internet. The crime rate fell drastically as the Internet took hold because people were able to moderate one another. I don't mean silicon, I don't mean moderation like, you know, banning people for wrong things. No, I mean as in they're capable of giving someone an opinion outside of their normal echo chamber. Like, for instance, and this unfortunately happens online, someone's in, in part of a group 
They tend to all be roughly aligned politically. That tends to happen. It is possible to penetrate those bubbles, those echo chambers, if you know what you're doing. It's like when I had the, uh, the debate against Richard Spencer there. I was defamed. I've been defamed by the Data Society. I've been defamed by Right Wing Watch and Jared Holt. I've been defamed by BuzzFeed and all of these other fucking morons in the lamestream culture who don't understand anything about the internet. Because they looked at it as I was plat- by my involvement, I'm platforming hate. In reality, what I'm doing is debating somebody who has identitarian views. I'm not an identitarian. I'm a libertarian. They don't see, they don't see it that way though. And because they're fear-mongering opportunists, what, what's the media doing right now in its ever-present spin cycle? Blood's not even dry. They're, they're, some injured people might still die of their wounds. And they're already spinning it as this is the responsibility of Gab. All tech needs to be taken down, says Krasenstein. I've reported this site before because I'm being harassed by people on Gab. Shame on you for existing and believing in free speech. As though people like Krasenstein didn't create the problem to begin with by pressuring Silicon Valley to censor everyone. You created this. You are responsible. Not me. Not fucking Gab. Not other creators. Not alt tech. You. The lame stream. You are sick. You, you have difficulties understanding reality and you're generally too fucking stupid to understand it. I don't think you can be taught any different at this point. You're so opportunistic and you love the fact that people died because you'll make money off of sensationalism. Of course you will. And you'll spin it a million different ways. The other thing, oh, Trump is responsible. No, Robert Bowers hated Trump. If he indeed, uh, as allegedly is the case, according to Gab and everything else under the sun, is the shooter, this is an individual who hates Donald Trump, thinks the Republican Party sucks, the Democratic Party sucks, eh, the whole thing sucks, it's time for, for rising up in violence or something, you know? individuals have gotten pushed to that point because they've been masked to platform. In some cases, these people have lost jobs. They've been ridiculed uh, squarely. Their views are ridiculed without a proper challenge. The problem is when you don't debate the view from any logical perspective and you simply ridicule it as though it's not worth your time to debate, you put more stress on the person without alleviating the actual problem. So this is Silicon Valley's mess. Dude, and, and look, like, well, Gab's responsible. Too much free speech. Okay. Is Twitter uh, uh, responsible there? What's her name? Rochelle Ritchie uh, had reported Caesar Sayoc, the, 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 the bomb maker there, the fake bomb maker, had reported him several weeks ago, and he didn't get removed from Twitter. So is Twitter responsible for the spreading of hate because they didn't remove someone who clearly did violate their TOS in that instance? No, of course they're not responsible. They're fucking platform that other people use. No law, by the way, at the time was broken. Gab's not just going to ban somebody because, oh, well, they might be a radical or something. The hope is that you debate them and de-escalate the situation. Show them, yes, there are people who have views other than yourself. They're not some dehumanized NPC. They have their own views, their own life. They're not trying to fuck you over, and they're willing to entertain debate with you. They're, they don't consider you to be a fucking leper. But Silicon Valley and the corporate media do want them to be considered lepers. It will drive them into increasingly fanatic, death-spiraling echo chambers that will be in part on all tech, because mainstream tech doesn't want to deal with the problem, They'd rather wash their hands of the situation, pretend the problem doesn't exist. That's the NIMBY mentality. Not in my backyard. No, 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 you go be a fanatic elsewhere. By the way, we're going to try to deplatform all tech. Let me tell you, they will find somewhere to congregate no matter how much suppression you use. Censorship does not work, and it's never benevolent. And then you're trying to deplatform people like me because we get defamed as far right because we talked to Richard Spencer a couple times. It's ridiculous, and it is leading people to violence. Yeah, absolutely. Guess what? It's not Trump that's responsible. It's not even people like Maxine Waters or Clinton that are responsible. The individual is responsible for the action, and the action is a symptom of the underlying disease of the creation of echo chambers, in part the responsibility of Silicon Valley's big tech couple dozen fucking firms that deplatform people and lend themselves, by the way, in so doing, uh, to conspiracy theories of one type or another, sometimes with a kernel of truth in them, unfortunately, and by constant suppression and constant defamation. And the thing is that the creators, those of us with the skills so that we can penetrate those echo chambers, we're not willing to do it anymore. Because what happened when, you know, for a brief period there, earlier blood sports, 
when we were doing that, a lot of political debates on these various channels, what happened? The corporate media tried to kick people like me offline and defame and deplatform us for, for debating ethno-nationalism, for debating the hard right. So fuck it. We're not responsible for that. You are. That's about all. Peace out.